Hello YouTubers, my new toy, a shuttle PC. This has come at exactly the right time. Um, my girlfriend's office is getting a bit overcrowded with um, stuff and a rather large computer can be substituted with this which will free up a little bit of space. Um, I know it posts, I know the memory works uh, but so far that's all I know. Um, Needs a bit of work and needs a new hard drive. I've got one here. Well, it's not new, but 80 gig Western Digital. And I've got a DVD rewriter. Philips. I think it's got onboard graphics. It's got a slot there, but yeah. So anyway, this is um, a rather smart, small PC. Um, I've no idea what the specs are. I should find that out when I get it up and running. Okay, so that's the before shot, as it were. And it's up and running. Problems? Uh, none, really. Um, I needed to download some drivers, but that's not surprising uh, for the graphics and the sound, the chipset, uh, a few other bits and pieces. The um, everything other than the graphics and the sound, um, I could have left with the stock drivers and XP, but um, the graphics and the sound, uh, you need the shuttle drivers from their site. But that's a, a common occurrence, not a problem. Uh, my impressions of this are uh, surprisingly good. It's a 2.6 GHz Celeron chip. It has a SIS chipset. Uh, it has onboard graphics, which is good enough for office tasks. Uh, it has an AGP slot, and if you want to develop the uh, graphics capability a bit more. It has onboard sound uh, via various outputs one of which is 6 channel sound via SPDIF so with the AGP slot and um, a good sound output it could go down the gaming route um, it could go down the media center route uh, various options open to you uh, it has a usual smattering of uh, USB ports at the front they're not behind panels or recessed, which is good. There's nothing more annoying if you can't fit a large thumb drive into a port. So that's a plus as far as I'm concerned. Uh, it has another PCI slot here. It has another bay here, but it doesn't have a um, front access. It sits around here. But the option's there for another drive or whatever. If you want to go down that route, one thing I will keep an eye on is the uh, temperature. It seems to hover around 60 degrees under load and that's with the case off. Um, I'm curious to see what sort of temperatures it reaches under load with the case on. So I'll probably install um, core temp or something similar and uh, keep an eye on that. So all in all it's really a um, surprisingly versatile little machine. Can use it for a variety of stuff. The only thing is to keep an eye on the temperatures, particularly if you're going to start installing cards uh, and filling the bay up. And uh, I'd also be careful of the current draw on the power supply. Um, but with those two provisors in mind, um, I like this. So I'm going to finish cleaning this off. Um, I've already air cleaned the inside and um, I've wet cleaned the front and I don't like things like um, hand grease and fingerprints on the computer chassis or any computer components so I tend to clean those off as well which I've done the last thing to do is to do as much cable management as possible just to keep all this stuff out of the way of the fans anything I can to increase the airflow uh, I will and I need to sort that out. 
just a bit grubby. So that's the next thing. Ta-da! All done. Uh, all the software is installed. It's all been updated. This is part of the uh, Active Directory domain. It um, logs on with uh, various user accounts. Um, it's all sorted, really. Uh, one thing worth noting is I have um, roaming profiles, which makes um, situations like this uh, a breeze. I install XP. I install um, various core applications like uh, Microsoft Office. Um, but configuring various things, such as, for example, Outlook Express, um, I don't need to do any of that because these settings are pulled from the uh, network server that contains the roaming profiles. For example, Outlook Express has various settings um, uh, entered into it so that it can retrieve the emails from the web service. Well, I don't have to re-enter them. They're stored as part of the roaming profile. So all the settings are saved and the contacts themselves uh, are saved as well. So um, when you log into this, your roaming profile will pull all that data from the network server and um, I don't need to uh, enter any of that stuff. Um, it's all done. The only thing that doesn't get copied over from the network server is the um, email contents themselves. Um, that's by design. Uh, you could have um, <laughs> gigabytes of emails depending on your job and the nature of the um, contents of the emails so yeah that's easily um, circumvented I just copied all the emails themselves onto a USB thumb drive put it in here and copy them over to the relevant folder um, on the computer so those local settings don't get copied over um, to the roaming profile but uh, most other things do. So really, um, getting the accounts up and running is easy. I just install the software, update it, make it part of the domain, um, log on with the account, and most of the stuff gets um, pulled from the server uh, via roaming profiles. And various bits I, I have to sort manually, but not much. So after all that waffling anyway, um, that's done. You can see I wasn't lying when I said there wasn't much space. Yeah, that looks good there. Job done.